Hey fellow heroes, and welcome to the new season of builds and endgame content I'm going to be spreading out to you all. Arc 3.0 has finally come, I am loving some of the interaction it offers the players from moving really fast, to simply chaining our line into everyone within my spear. I'm still learning the ins and outs of the aspects and fragments used, so I won't be showing any arc endgame builds just yet, but I can show you some high tier builds that are worth investing in. If you have the season pass, then you may have unlocked the delicate tomb fusion, which is both powerful in its own right, and fast enough to wipe out groups in one shot. But what if I showed you a setup that makes using the fusion a primary, and a new exotic within itself? You'll think I'm mad, but honestly you'll love me straight after. But you know what else is quite delicate to touch in game? This channel right here, so if you enjoyed the video then I'd really appreciate a like, a sub, and for you to turn on your notifications as it goes a long way for me. For the subclass, we will be using Storm Trance, as this provides the best coverage in hitting multiple enemies at once and can allow you to get iron ore traces with ease. So the plan here is to enhance our exotic by allowing it to cause non-stop jolt, increase its damage further, non-stop iconic traces and blinding ability after each kill, which is a overkill within itself. From tinkering, I've managed to achieve that goal and it works out really well for content that has a huge amount of capacity in one area, like Gambit or Cyber's missions. The only issue you'll come across with the setup is ammo, but this can be fixed a few ways. So let's start with the aspects, which we have the following. Lightning Surge allows us to turn into a ball of lightning and bring down lightning onto our position. We then have Electric Static Mind, where defeating a target with arc abilities, or being jolted and blinded, will create ionic traces. Collecting traces will make you amplified. For Fragments, we have Spark of Beacons, where while amplified, your arc special final blows create a blinding explosion. Spark of Resistance, which will provide you a damage reduction while surrounded. The Spark of Discharge, where Arc Weapon Finder Blows have a chance to create Arc Traces. And Spark of Magnitude, where your Arc Grenades with lingering abilities last longer. For stats, we have 70 Resilience, 80 Recovery, and 70 Discipline. The main stat you want to focus on are Resilience and Discipline, since you're going to be up close in most fights, and will need to trigger your grenades to become amped. Do note though that apparently Resilience is bugged for both Warlocks and Titans, but only for the Arc Subclass role. For key mods, we have Font of Might for a 25% weapon elemental buff of matching type, Elemental Ordnance for creating worlds via grenades, Quick Charge where you come charged with light via multiple fusion kills, Powerful World for plus 2 worlds created, and Heavy Handed where being charged with light, we can get back half a melee back after a charge melee attack. It also has a secondary effect of giving us more special ammo for our fusion if surrounded. Although stats are questionable at best, it doesn't affect the build too much to make it non-viable for all users at play. With our setup, you should be getting ability energy back non-stop which will allow you to rotate your grenades melee as much as you like. All you need to do is net a kill and the ball will be rolling with how amped up your weapons can become. At a later date, we will revisit the build with better stats and see if it can hit just as hard in in-game content, but for now, it's just as perfect as I thought it would be. So from here, you'll then want to invest into the weaponry, and ideally your primary could be whatever you like, but your secondary and heavy needs to be arc so you can make use of the arc bonuses applied. My primary is the duty bound AR with petrol motion and frenzy, and as it being a depth role, it plays a pretty good role with keeping a fast but hard hitting pace that the setup follows. Although a weapon with osmosis is better, I don't think it needs to be included unless you want to go full arc mode only. Since the build relies on the secondary more often, I only see the primary as a good contender of being balanced and reliable for any instances you are in. A SMG is also a good fit, but only if you're happy to sacrifice a bit of range for it. For our secondary, we have the Delicate Tomb Fusion, which is the brand new fusion for the season, and works a bit different to what we are familiar with. So the weapon can be fired vertically and horizontally, which is good as it allows users to accurately fire from the hip with little loss doing so. Now you don't tend to fire a fusion from the hip, as that's not where it succeeds in the most, but the option to do so is nice. What makes the weapon strong though is the ability to create iron traces on most kills and then overcharge your next shot, which will do a bit more damage and draw anyone nearby it. It's like a shotgun, but faster, has more range, and keep California Electric Grid going for years on end. So when you combine the subclass effects to this weapon alone, you can wipe out rumor combatants in one shot. We also have the Rain of Fire exotic for the 20% Radiant buff for Fusion, and it honestly feels like we are using a mini Legend of Accurus with how hard hitting it is. For Heavy, I then have the Hot Head Rocket Launcher with Tracking and Explosive Light, 
And this is a great weapon to pack with this arc build, as you'll be producing a pure heavy DPS in single shots. You can nuke ultras with this if you're fully armed up, but at the same time I found that the arc heavy machine gun can do wonders when everything for them aligns right. If you managed to get the chain of command machine gun last season, then you'll be in luck with how useful it can be. For newer folks, don't worry about what heavy to use as this can be sorted at a later date. For stats, as mentioned before, we don't have a lot of pros and cons to the setup where we need to have specific stats available to make the loadouts acceptable. This is why today's showing is going to be light as a lot of the abilities region will be spawning from my Arnic traces created. So to start, resilience being at 70 is a good spot to start so we can become more resistant while out in the field. We do have a fragment available that gives us further damage reduction while surrounded, so combining that with high resilience will make you very tanky and hard to kill in any activity. If you can get it to 100, then do so by all means, but don't fret if you can't. For discipline, we have ours at 70 as well, and this will be used alongside our melee, which is only at 40. The idea here is to use the two and rotate abilities as much as you can, so you can keep a heavy flow of ionic traces going as long as you like. When you add in elemental wells to the mix, the amount of energy you get back is enough to keep your minis going without the need of adding on more mods to do so. At the same time, with heavy handed attach and outreach applied, we can get our mini back relatively fast as long as we hit its conditions. You can of course aim for 50 to 60 if you like, but I recommend you think this path through so it doesn't take away from key areas and stats that you really need to deal with first. We then lastly have recovery at 80, and to be honest, this stat doesn't need to be so high unless you plan to use your rifts a lot. In my case here, I tend to use it as much as possible as some activities you are quite squishy. Leftover wise, we have Harmonic Siphon for creating orbs of power via magic elements. Fusion Rifle Ammo Finder for getting more ammo while having your fusion out. A fusion Rifle Scavenger for more ammo on pickup. And then we have Outreach where it reduces melee cooldown when collecting orb of power. Now as we've covered that, here is the list breaking this all down. For Head, we have Resilience, Fusion Rifle Ammo Finder, Harmonic Siphon and Fallen Might mod. Arm, we have Resilience and Elemental Ordnance mod. Chest, we have Minor Discipline, Thermal Shot Plating, because of Damna, Quick Charge mod. Leg, we have Resilience, Fusion Rifle Scavenger mod, and Battle of Worm mod. Bond, we have Minor Resilience, Outreach, and Heavy Handed mod. So here's the result of trying our Arc 3.0 with the build. You get a weapon that can hit hard and chain Arc Electric to all targets multiple times to the point of blinding you. With how simple but destructive the set is, it reminds me of what would happen if you were to combine a Legend of Accurus and Risk Runner together and well you get this abomination of a power weapon in your hand. And it's quite interesting how Arc Reaper Oak can then hand its most Arc weapon to do the same or similar level of damage with ease. You don't need to use just the following weapon as shown. Having a plug one with Reservoir Burst can offer you the near or similar same effect but with differences being a perk, so I don't see you needing to use the following exotic to achieve your goals as well. The only difference here is that by using the following exotic, you get more ionic traces to spawn, which will overall allow you to pop the jolt effect more often. So does the build stack well in endgame content? Well, yes, but not by a lot. Trying out the new seasonal content on Mass, for example, with my buddies, showed that even though I was underleveled, I was able to do quite a hefty amount of damage if all my shots landed. It being a fusion build and getting all the buffs going allowed me to mop up rooms within a few shots and against ultras and majors we did good damage but not amazing. Still I don't recommend you use it for endgame content just yet until you get your stats more adjusted and are at a high level. We also have the issue with running out of ammo quickly since using a weapon as a primary can drain you very fast. You can see that I have a lot of mods on to circumvent this issue and it does help but sometimes even that won't be enough to help you. The new fusion is wonderful at its job and when combined with the following setup, it gives the users a quick rundown as to how the jolt mechanic will work. It's not perfect, but it gives you a basic understanding of it. It can of course be improved on further, but as the season is still new, I think what we have at the moment is more than justifiable enough to use and fully enjoy with what the build can offer. So, like always, stay tuned as we have more builds like this to cover and explore in detail. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny related stuff. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.